Hey everyone, Rob Lawrence again with Ohio Radon Systems. Today we're going to show you another live video feed of an interior radon mitigation system. This home was constructed in 2002. It is a 3,300 square foot two-story home. The radon level um, in this home was 9.1. And next we'll take you in the basement and show you how this thing starts. Okay, now we're back in the basement. Uh, right here is our riser pipe and our suction point. Once again, this is an interior system. Uh, the riser pipe continues up the foundation wall and pokes out into the garage interior right there. And this here is our suction point. Um, we were able to locate our suction point directly above the interior drainage tile uh, that runs around the foundation of this home. Uh, that gave us an excellent spot to extend our pressure field all the way around the entire basement uh, perimeter. Uh, we also find perme permeable soil underneath this basement floor. That was a very clean gravel that we found. When we find gravel, we can move lots of air, which generally means lower radon levels. You see our clamps there. The system is clamped to the foundation wall at the suction point, and again up here at the sill plate. Uh, this device here is called the manometer. It measures vacuum pressure inside the pipe. We'll go ahead and pull the tube out so you can hear the amount of air that's moving inside this pipe. The radon fan that we use for this particular home uh, is a fan that's designed to move a lot of air. Um, there's different fans that provide more suction versus moving air, but because we found the permeable soil and the drainage towel right underneath the sump or the uh, suction point, uh, we chose a fan that moves a lot of air. The post test on this home came back at 0.4. Once again, the radon level pre mitigation was 9.1, and we were down to 0.4. So basically. Uh, the outdoor average radon level is 0.4, and that's the same as what it is inside this home now. Next, we'll take you to the garage. Okay, here we are in the garage, and right here you can see the riser exits the basement, comes through the band joist, and into the garage interior. Runs vertically, where it penetrates the ceiling and goes into the attic space. There's actually a finished living space just on the other side of this wall right here. Um, we actually didn't have a whole lot of options on where to locate our suction point in the basement because of the living space above the garage. Uh, we had to route towards the right side of the home and what you're going to see in the next video we discharge out the side of the garage roof here. System has labels each level of the home. These silver devices you see right here are fire collars Anytime we penetrate the firewall separation between the garage and the interior of the home, we have to put a fire collar there. The material around the collar simply expands should there ever be a fire in the basement, garage, or attic space. There's one at the ceiling there because there's a living space above there too. Actually just behind there. Next video will take you up in the attic. Okay, here we are in the attic. And right here is where our, our riser pipe comes out of the garage. Now this install is a little different than most of the other ones we do. Normally we come straight out of the garage, but because of that living space there, um, we had to throw a couple turns in the system right there. Basically to get us to the right side of the garage over here. Uh, it was really the only place we could discharge the system because of all the windows along the front. Uh, several different roofs turn and go different directions. Uh, we have to discharge a certain distance above windows and roof structures. So the riser continues this way through the attic and you'll notice that the pipe slopes. Um, we've said before in some of our other videos it's highly important that this pipe slope back towards the suction point. Uh, these pipes in the attic get cold during the winter. The warm moist air that we're discharging from underneath the home condenses inside the pipe so naturally you're going to get a little bit of condensation. You can see right there we uh, use some 2x4s to get our slope. Once again right there, you'll notice the pipe strapping and the clamps. We secure the pipes every eight feet. And next we'll show you the fan. Okay, here's our radon fan. As I told you before, this is a fan that moves a lot of air because we found the permeable soil in the drainage tile right underneath the suction point. And right here is an electrical disconnect switch that we put within five feet of the fan. And the pipe simply discharges through the roof here. You'll notice that the pipe is painted black. Um, 
we didn't want a white pipe sticking out the side of this garage, so we went ahead and spray painted the pipe for the client. Uh, because of the steep roof, we used a special kind of uh, roof flashing here. It's called a cozy collar. It allows us to install the roof flashing from inside the attic uh, versus being on an unsafe roof. Okay, next we'll show you where this discharge is on the outside. Okay, everybody, here we are on the outside of the home. And there's where the riser pipe penetrates through the garage attic space. It discharges about 18 inches above the roof line. On the top there is a uh, varmint cap. It's used to keep any varmints, animals, or pests out, out of the inside of our pipe. You can see the roof flashing there. Once again, that's a specialized roof flashing that we use to flash the roof from inside the attic. Uh, because of the pitch of the roof, uh, we did not feel comfortable climbing on the roof here.